I know you saw this title and you're wondering, does he really believe NASA lied about the Earth being flat? Cue the music. So this is episode number 111. I'm your host, Manny Moonraker, and this is UFO Buster Radio's UFO Report. But like always, before we get started, before we get into this whole flat earth craziness, last week I said I was going to put a link to the podcast awards in the description, and I totally neglected to do that. So if you want to get busy, if you want to get UFO Buster Radio on the map, then go to the link in the description. It is a nomination sign-up form. UFO Buster Radio will be found under the category of news because no fucks were given. So nominate us for that 2018 Podcast Awards dealio. Right now, if you go into it, you're not going to be able to do anything because the uh, nomination site itself is closed. However, July 1st, it will open for everyone to go in there. And for you guys to be able to nominate UFO Buster Radio. Now, this is not open to every single podcast in the world. You have to register to be in it. So you got to be in it to win it. So we're in it. So let's win it. It is going to be you guys who determine if I receive enough nominations for this 2018 podcast award. And listen, it's a news category. What can I do? There is nothing I could do about it. That's where I ended up. So let's get it. Now, if you follow me on social media, you will know when the gates are open. Because I will be sending it out. I'll be tweeting, Facebooking it. I will be putting it on Instagram and on Google Plus as well. So you will be in the know. But for those of you who don't, July 1st, come back to this episode. Click that link and help a Moonraker out. Now, I know you're you're wondering. What, you're wondering basically what the heck is going on with NASA and the whole flat earth situation. And basically what went down a few months ago is that the flat earthers said that um, NASA has been lying to us. Not only are they lying to us about the shape of the earth, but they're hiding something pivotal, something important, something that even if you don't believe in the flat earth situation, you should be alarmed that an agency, one that's connected to the conspiracy machine of the United States and may even be connected to the conspiracy machine of the world. That you, as a plain old blue-collar person, should be worried about what NASA is doing because apparently they've got way too much power. And to be honest, I don't give NASA enough credit, but these guys give them all the credit because NASA is lying to us about something really huge. I mean, they're bigly lying to us, and it is huge. The conference, of course, was held in North Carolina, and I believe it was like this past January, and I really didn't hear too much about it. Uh, As you know, I really didn't even talk about it on this podcast, but recently somebody reposted an article regarding what was discussed. Now, there is a filmmaker and Flat Earth aficionado by the name of Rob Skyba. Rob feels that definitely the Earth is flat. And he gave a presentation called Testing the Globe. In that presentation, Rob disclosed why. Why he believes that NASA is lying. What is the core motivation for NASA to lie to us? It's not because of the way they're shooting off rockets, because flat earthers believe those rockets really aren't going where they say they are going. It's not because NASA says that the flat earth globe or flat disk theory, you know, the one that sits on the turtle, that it's BS because they've got film showing that the earth is spherical in nature. 
It's none of that. The reason why Rob says NASA is truly hiding the fact that the Earth is flat is because they are hiding the existence of God. According to Rob, the Bible describes the Earth as being flat. And NASA and all the conspiracy rubber dickers of the world are trying to hide God from us by saying that the world is spherical. To him, that is the ultimate motivation. It's not anything else. It's not money. It's not, uh, you know, a claim to the skies. It's, uh, it's not fame. It's none of that. It's the fact that NASA wants to hide God from everyone. And the way to do it is to make the earth round. Now, I know there are many people out there that own telescopes and when they look at other planets in the solar system and when they look at the sun, they don't look flat. So I guess there has to be a reason why the earth would be flat. And if it, if you're going to say God made it flat to put people on it, well, shit, you got a pretty good argument, huh? The problem is that you really can't... Uh, you What can you say? I, I, I don't know. You... You can't take thousands of hours, thousands of pictures, uh, millions of people looking up into the sky and seeing spherical planets and then believe that the one planet that they're sitting on, the one planet that they, you know, live, it turns out that it's flat, but they can't really tell because no one can other than the lying people at NASA who are hiding God from us. In the long run, it's not an argument that... Uh, anyone's ever going to win against a flat earther unless you shoot them off into the sky, tie them up to a rocket, drop their big girl panties and just shoot them up. There really is no other way for this. There was another article I came across where they talked about how NASA is faking the idea that there is a, uh, a, a pole. That there is a South Pole. That in fact, that they're putting in images, fake images, that it doesn't really exist. We have basically one pole that wraps all around the disk. My answer to that is, why not strap some of them to the front of a boat and just let it go and see if they fall off the planet? Because if they do, I guess they were right. But if they come back eventually, oh well, sucks for you. But as the story goes, the flat earth theory is falling flat. Um, but it is in the last few, I don't know, years or so, it's been catching fire. It's on fire right now. Everybody wants to know whether or not the earth is really flat, whether NASA is the one who's hiding all the information, and who has the answers. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to have to make the decision on this. Do some research. Go read some stuff. I firmly believe that it is spherical, but you have to make the call eventually, right? Is it spherical? Is it flat? Is NASA hiding God? I don't know. I don't think it is. I think that uh, old Robbie here gives NASA way too much credit, and uh, I don't see them pulling off such a crazy stunt, especially since the argument about flat Earth kind of happened way before NASA was ever around, so pff, there goes that one. Hey guys, this is Marty Angler from Angling Waters Outdoors, and you're listening to my pally, Manny Moonraker, right here on UFO Plus Radio Network. Hey Manny, you know why I fish at night? Can you say UFO? UFO? That's right. The next one takes us to the story regarding one of my favorite legacy UFO incidents. In New Mexico, we all love and hold it dearly to our hearts, and that is the Roswell Incident. It seems that every time the annual Roswell event is coming around, something happens. Something is put out there to try to really, you know, beef up and put this Roswell situation in the spotlight every year. So, out of KRQE... Apparently, the Bureau of Land Management was taking some kind of an interest 
in a geologist out in New Mexico because he claimed that he recently may have found, allegedly, possibly, and this could be according to him, parts of the UFO crash that happened in 1947. Now, I know some of you are thinking, how can that be? 1947. How can there still be parts laying around anywhere? Well, the guy, believe it or not, is a geologist who actually works for the International UFO Museum. And he exactly, uh, he's a researcher and he's been featured in several documentaries. But apparently he got a bit of a scare because he found, using a metal detector, 20 metallic fragments... They're about the size of a fingernail. And then he got a call. He got a call from the Bureau of Land Management. And they said they wanted to meet with him. They wanted to talk. They wanted to be with him one-on-one. They're not going to do this by mail. They're not going to do it by phone. They wanted to meet him face-to-face. Of course, Mr. Kimbler was completely and totally taken by this because he was scared shitless. He thought for sure that his discoveries, the stuff that he's been collecting, which was at the museum, was going to be taken. Over the past eight years, he dedicated himself to finding physical proof of the UFO out in New Mexico, and he apparently visited the site in Roswell about a dozen times. On the night, or the day, that he found the questionable items that he believes is part of the UFO, he wrote an account of what was happening. According to him, he started to look around all over the place, looking to see if the helicopters were going to fly over. Because apparently they frequent the area. Because he says you tend to get paranoid when you read the stories about Roswell and what happened to the people when they've come forward with stuff. So when he got that phone call, he kind of freaked out a little bit. But it turns out that they were only going to him to let him know the do's and don'ts about using metal detectors. They were only going to him to let him know the do's and don'ts about using metal detectors. So he was freaking out for nothing. The article says he even thought at one point he was just going to have a heart attack. But then that's it. So the Bureau of Land Management just left him alone. Almost sounds like someone wanted to put a little bit of a scare in him. But I could not find a single follow-up as to what's the situation with these fragments. My... Summation is that they may just take the center point of discussion in the upcoming Roswell Convention. Now, to his credit, he did say that some of these items may be things that uh, could be possibly trash from campers and things like that. But he did say that some of the material that he found out there has been tested and they have anomalies that suggests an extraterrestrial origin. So with that alone, on July 6th, 7th, and 8th, which is when the Roswell Festival happens, I have a feeling that Mr. Kimbler and his material may just take center stage as part of the discussion regarding the crash at Roswell. As always, the links to these articles that we just discussed are in the description for the episode, so go ahead and click on them, check them out, This is the end of episode 111. The Leveland, Texas documentary should be up on YouTube by Tuesday night. But like I said, if you don't follow me on social media, you might just miss it. So go to YouTube, find the UFO Buster account. The link for that is also in the description. Sign up. Subscribe. Because when that goes up, You don't want to miss it. Like I said, I'm not Spielberg. But there are some fascinating connections that I've made regarding Loveland and what's happening today in ufology. 
So keep your eyes to the skies. This is Manny Moonraker checking out. Ciao.